The film begins with the introduction of a man named Ben, who had recently created a camera with a special lens that allowed people to see things that are normally invisible, such as ghosts or spirits. Ben attended a party where there was a ghost tour guide who took people to places known for their supernatural activities. Ben and the tour guide immediately developed a liking for each other and quickly got married. It was revealed that the tour guide was also a medium, someone who believed in and could communicate with spirits. However, she tragically died in an accident. After her passing, Ben became very despondent and withdrawn. He eventually became a ghost tour guide himself, giving up his previous work, but he still had doubts about the existence of ghosts. Afterward, we see a woman who had come to a very old mansion with her son, which was rumored to be haunted. Because of this, her son was seeing a lot of ghosts and apparitions that were trying to scare him. Both of them got back into their car, and a ghost also entered their car and seemed to be going with them. As they were leaving the mansion, a ghost from the mansion, while laughing, said, Go now, children, but you will have to come back here, and you'll return very soon. When Ben was sleeping at his home, father came to visit him. Because the door was locked, he had to break the lock and enter the house. Ben threatens him to leave, to which father responds, I need your help. A mother and son are trapped in a haunted mansion. Can you assist them? And you have that camera that can record ghosts, right? You can capture the ghosts on your camera. Ben firmly refuses, saying, I'm not going because I don't believe in ghosts anyway. Father tells him that the family will pay you a lot of money if you go. Hearing about the money, Ben agrees because he needed it. After father leaves, Ben prepares his camera, and when he arrives at the mansion, he meets Gabby and her son. They were there because they had run away that day, but they came back because the ghost had already told them that Ben would come. Before entering, Gabby stops Ben at the door, saying, If you want to leave, you can do it right now because once you enter the mansion, you won't be able to leave again. Ben couldn't quite grasp what she was saying, and it all felt strange to him. However, since he had come for the money, he decided to go inside. Gabby told him about herself and the mansion. She explained that there were various types of ghosts here, doing strange and eerie things to frighten them. They were camping in the middle of the house because it was a safe spot for them. Ben found her story unbelievable, and to make things worse, he had forgotten to charge his camera, so he pretended to take some random photos. During this time, they noticed a ghost standing still, not making any movements. Ben thought that there were no ghosts there and mentioned this to Gabby, saying, There are no ghosts or spirits here. You're just needlessly scared. After saying this, he got into his car and left for his home. But when he was at his own place, he started seeing ghosts around him. Ben managed to charge his camera and took a picture of the ghost. The picture revealed the shadow of an old man who was a swordsman and whose image Ben had seen in the mansion before. It turned out that the ghost was indeed the same person. From that point on, the ghost started haunting Ben day and night. When he woke up, he found his room submerged underwater, and the ghost repeatedly insisted that he should return to the mansion. Ben eventually gave in, and when he returned to the mansion, he found Gabby and her son waiting for him, as they knew he would come back. Now, he was just like them, bound to the mansion, and the ghost wouldn't let him leave. This clarified how Gabby, her son, and others became trapped there, even Father, who had sent Ben there. Ben grew angry with Father and questioned why he didn't reveal the truth to him, showing him the picture of the ghost. Father tried to calm him down, suggesting they could fight the ghost, but Ben thought it was not a good idea and that they should find a way to escape instead. Later that evening, a ghost in the mansion tried to scare Ben. For the first time, he was quite frightened but the others helped calm him down. The following day, they discussed among themselves that they needed to find a way to leave the mansion and to stop it from trapping others. They believed they needed two types of people, someone who knew the history of the mansion and another person who could communicate with the ghost to find out why the spirits wanted to keep people there and why they harassed those who left. Ben decided to set up multiple cameras throughout the mansion that night. They captured footage of the ghosts fleeing in all directions. Gabby's son suggested that the ghosts might be running from something or someone. Ben began to understand that the ghosts weren't trying to harm them or scare them away but rather wanted to keep them within the mansion. One day, Ben and father ventured out of the mansion and met a man who knew the history of the place. He explained that the mansion was built many years ago, and after the owner's wife died of a mysterious illness, strange and eerie events began to occur. The man they met had a map of the mansion, which Ben and father took with them as they fled, and he did not pursue them. The map provided them with valuable information, but it also led to a medium becoming trapped within the mansion. They discovered that after the death of the mansion's owner's wife, many mediums and regular people had come to the mansion, and many had met gruesome deaths. People who came here turned strange, and incidents like two brothers shooting each other and a wife killing her husband with bullets occurred. 
They also found a letter in which the mansion owner had mentioned encountering a highly skilled and somewhat sorcerous medium. He instructed her to come to the upper room. Following these instructions, they searched for the room and found a secret chamber. They all gathered inside, and as they were about to begin a ritual to communicate with the medium, a powerful malevolent spirit attacked them and disrupted the ritual. It then attacked and threw the medium out of the chamber, and the elderly man was left to confront the ghost on his own. The ghost, after attacking the medium, placed her on the sofa. They all gathered downstairs again. Ben was missing his wife, so he asked the medium to help him communicate with her. He was quite emotional and started crying. The medium replied, I'm so sorry, but I can't facilitate a conversation with her because she's not here or anywhere around. She drew a diagram to explain that there is a pathway between our world and the world of spirits. Troubled or trapped spirits are visible to us. We can communicate with them, but they often frighten us. Good spirits, on the other hand, have already reached their destination and we cannot communicate with them. Your wife is one of those and those who have found peace are only felt by us. Communication is not possible, the medium explained. That night, as everyone was sleeping, Ben's sleep was disrupted and he saw the ghostly figure of his wife before him. Just as he started to speak with her, he was drawn to where many malevolent spirits were trying to frighten him. He realized that it wasn't his wife's spirit, it had merely taken her form. Just then, he woke up and realized it had all been a dream. Since they couldn't communicate with the medium, they started searching for something related to her. Ben found a box with the sorceress's name on it and began bringing it downstairs. At that moment, the spirit of his wife attacked him, looking terrifying. Nevertheless, he managed to get down with the box. Now, all of them opened the box and found the sorceress's equipment. They discovered a book titled Basic Crystal Ball, which contained a trapped sorceress with whom they could communicate. The sorceress began telling them the true story of the mansion. The owner of the mansion was deeply saddened by the loss of his wife and constantly remembered her. He couldn't move on. He tried to communicate with his wife through the medium many times, but she never responded. However, a mistake occurred. Accidentally, a portal opened to another realm from where spirits and malevolent entities started to pour in, becoming trapped in the mansion forever. Frustrated by his unsuccessful attempt, the sorceress advised the mansion's owner to let go, to leave his wife in peace, but he refused. He kept trying to summon her repeatedly, which resulted in a dangerous and malevolent spirit taking on the appearance of his wife and ultimately claiming his life. Upon discovering this, the sorceress realized the identity of this malevolent spirit. She had become aware that this was the worst entity that trapped newcomers and harnessed their misery for her own gain, just as she had exploited the owner's grief. The story illustrates the consequences of meddling with the spirit world and how unresolved grief can lead to tragic and malevolent supernatural events. And then, he killed her. The sorceress continues her story, saying that before her death, she had glimpsed the malevolent spirit and was killed by it, trapping her soul in the crystal ball. She explains that the dangerous malevolent spirit, taking on the appearance of the owner's wife, is on a mission to perform a ritual that requires the sacrifice of 1,000 souls. So far, she has obtained 900 souls and plans to complete the mission on the next full moon night. Once she has gathered all 1,000 souls, she will be able to leave the mansion and wreak havoc in the world. This is why she rapidly kills unhappy people and captures their souls, and the sorceress's soul has started to depart. But before leaving, she tells Ben, I'm sorry, and advises him to stay strong because the malevolent spirit is now sensing his grief, which belongs to his wife. With the departure of the sorceress, the group begins discussing their predicament. They realize that there are only 933 souls captured, not 999 as the elderly man claimed, and that the malevolent spirit needs just one more soul to complete her ritual. Now, they are all troubled, trying to figure out what to do, how to save themselves, and who this malevolent spirit might be. Gabby was also troubled by the smaller ghosts who disturbed her. They bothered her while she was cooking making objects in the kitchen levitate and play pranks. Gabby confided in Ben, saying that she was concerned about her son, who was always alone. She was worried that nothing would happen to him because she cared deeply for him. He had no friends and had experienced mistreatment, which led him to be alone all the time. Upon hearing this, Ben felt compassion for the boy and approached him. The child, with great innocence, explained that he had become used to being alone because he had no friends and nobody spoke to him. Now, he found solace in being alone and thinking about his dad, who had gone somewhere. Upon Ben's efforts to befriend the child and make him happy, they started playing and joking together. Ben's interactions with the boy brought joy not only to the child but also to Ben himself. The medium explained that she would perform the ritual to enter the world of spirits and try to learn about the malevolent spirit from the spirits there. Since Ben was more comfortable with the ritual, he decided to participate. 
He started exploring the mansion and observed how the ghosts lived there. He then encountered the spirit of the mansion's owner, who warned him to leave the mansion by any means necessary because the malevolent spirit needed just one more soul, which he would take by any means. After that, they would all be trapped in the mansion forever, never to be free. The malevolent spirit then attacked Ben, causing him to fall in fear. The malevolent spirit, Grum, attempted to capture Ben. It was revealed that Grum was the spirit of a notorious figure in his time, a man known for wearing an infamous iron headbox. His name was associated with infamy, and he was a cruel and ruthless individual. Ben managed to escape Grum's grasp and found his way back to the real world with the medium's guidance. When he returned, the others called him by name. In the real world, they created a sketch of Grum based on Ben's description. The sketch revealed that Grum had become wealthy and powerful but had a history of suffering and mistreatment. He had endured a troubled childhood, where everyone treated him poorly. After his mother's death, his father had banished him from the mansion, and Grum had lived alone. However, his father's death was mysterious, and Grum returned to the mansion, where he lured people to the parties he hosted day and night. Later, it was discovered that he had been using these parties as a means to perform dark rituals, which brought him wealth and fame. The people eventually learned the truth about him. To punish Grum, his head was cut off and his body was buried in the mansion. However, his head was never found. The medium explained that to permanently put an end to Grum's spirit, they needed something connected to him. Ben, the father, and Gabby's son set out to find Grum's head, and on their journey, they encountered the spirit of a malevolent swordsman who had been assisting them. The swordsman revealed that Grum's spirit wouldn't kill just anyone. The person would willingly offer themselves to Grum. He showed them a basement where the graves and belongings of the deceased were kept, and there they discovered Grum's head buried among the remains. They retrieved Grum's head and returned to the mansion. Inside, they left Gabby's son outside and informed him of the truth. The father confessed that he was not actually his father but had deceived him due to the lure of money. He apologized and asked for forgiveness, to which Ben reassured him and encouraged him to have faith in himself and help the others. As they entered the mansion, they found that Grum's spirit had possessed the elderly man, who then attacked them. Grum had thrown his own head into the fire to prevent the ritual from ever happening again. With Grum's spirit expelled from the elderly man, he started talking to them and revealed his true intentions. He claimed that not Ben but Gabby's son would be his ultimate prey. Since the passing of his dad, Gabby's son had become the focus of Grum's attention. Grum explained that he was using the boy's grief and sadness to try and control him. This revelation shocked Gabby as her son had discovered the truth about his father's death, which she had kept hidden by telling him that he had gone somewhere. Gabby rushed to protect her child. Before Grum's spirit could manipulate the boy any further, Ben intervened. He encouraged the boy not to dwell on his father's death as he was still young and had his whole life ahead of him. The boy listened to Ben's advice, and together, they left the mansion. Meanwhile, outside, the other spirits had begun to attack the remaining individuals. Father stepped in and tried to reason with them, urging them not to follow Grum. He assured them that they had a choice, they could leave the place freely or stay without fear of harm. His words had an impact, and the spirits chose to accept his offer. They left the mansion in peace. On the other hand, Ben, Gabby, and her son arrived at the cemetery, which was filled with numerous spirits who were now silent and peaceful. Finally, the spirits that had chosen to leave the mansion went back to their own world, while some good spirits decided to stay, enjoying their time in the company of Gabby and her son. With the sinister spirit of Grum defeated and sent to the underworld, peace had returned to the mansion. Ben and Gabby, having formed a special bond through the challenging ordeal, eventually fell for each other. Ben threw a big party at the mansion, where many people attended, including the spirits who joined the festivities. This unique gathering marked the beginning of a new and happier chapter in the history of the haunted mansion. As they celebrated, the spirits and the living harmoniously enjoyed the night, demonstrating that sometimes the most unexpected friendships can arise from the most haunting of situations. And that brings our tale of the haunted mansion to a close, where love and unity triumphed over fear and darkness. With this, the movie ends right here. Please let us know how you liked this story by leaving a comment. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.